This is a public health announcement from PLM 411. Change management syndrome is on the rise in manufacturing due to increased complexity and globalization. Symptoms of CMS include confusion about which information is accurate, miscommunication and mistakes leading to heads hitting desks. CMS leads to business paralysis from bad or missing data. Beware, this scourge can spread to coworkers who are out of the loop on changes. It frequently infects other departments who rely on current product data. Severe cases of CMS may even spread to suppliers or customers who come in contact with out of date files and revisions. What can stop the spread of this nuisance condition? PLM. Now in convenient time release capsules. This was a funny look at a serious problem manufacturers face on a regular basis. Watch PLM 411 to see how PLM helps manufacturers improve change management and avoid these problems. Hi, and welcome to PLM 411, where we give you straight information on how manufacturers can accelerate product innovation and product development. I'm Jim Brown with Tech Clarity, and I'm here with Alan Behrens of Texel. Hi, Jim. Today we're going to talk about who should care about PLM. And、uh, before we get started on that, maybe we should get on the same page about what PLM really is. Yeah, I, I, I mean, one of the problems with PLM is it means so many different things to different people. Um, and that sort of perpetuated its own problem, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it means so many things that it almost means nothing. You know, talk about product lifecycle management, and people get really hung up on the lifecycle term,、um, and they start thinking about retiring products or cradle to grave. And, and while that's an element of it, it really isn't necessarily where any given company is going to find the most value. I agree. It, 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 you know, at the end of the day, it's about managing products and processes in a company, and that's really all it's about. Why don't we talk a little bit about、um, company size? I know that、uh, you and I have talked about this before,、um, that there's some misconceptions out there, particularly about、uh, size of companies that use PLM. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's one of these things that PLM has been something that's generally been known as being applied to big companies,、mm -hmm. you know, especially automotive and aerospace. I think those are the, the domains that people think about. That's definitely not the case. I mean, you know, certainly historically, it's very similar to ERP. It started at big companies, but now it's applicable to everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, we're seeing a lot of、uh, smaller companies have the same issues in, in innovating, the same issues in developing products and working with their supply chain and making sure that they've got quality and,、yep. and communicating with the shop floor.、They're, you know, many of them are outsourcing. So there's lots of issues that are similar in the smaller companies. Typically, they just don't have the resources to deal with it. I, I agree. And, and in fact, that's one of the challenges is that the problems are the same. They just don't have either the money,、uh, the personnel, or the bandwidth. You know, the the, the financial bandwidth to to deal with what they need to do to grow. Yeah.、Um, and managing that is is a challenge. So they need something that's instantly productive, and something that fits what they need to do now and、uh, and and in the short term. Yeah, you know, I'm going to react to something else you said earlier. You met, we, we talked about company size, and you brought up industry. You、yeah. know, in aerospace and automotive, and traditionally there's been a lot of value. Um, from PLM in those industries, but you know that's that's a bit of a misconception now too, right? It, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's applicable to anybody.、Um, there there are obviously different workflows、uh, for different companies, but it's big and small alike. I mean, it, it's just that you know one needs to、uh, adapt what you're trying to do to the scale of the problem that you're trying to to actually. Um, get rid of at that particular time. Yeah, and and a lot of the problems are the same. I mean, you know, there there certainly are nuances of things that are that are different that drive some real problems in different industries.、Um, yes. But at the same time, the core functionality and the core needs of being able to to manage information and keep you know and collaborate and keep people working on the same piece of information and working on you know things in a project context, that that eighty percent is actually pretty consistent. Across industries, I, I agree, and and people forget that. I think we try and look at the problem in too large a scale, as opposed to actually looking at what we really need to do. Small companies need to execute what they need to do now. That eighty percent is what most people do most of the time. Yeah, and that's where it can really help. Yeah, no doubt, and and you know I think there's a, there's trade-offs between 
the, the capabilities that companies want and having something that really fits exactly what they what they need for their size, for their industry, for their own personal, you know, um, you know, sort of quirks of their business. But there's there's a trade-off between those deep capabilities and the complexity. And we've seen we've seen this in lots of software industries. People ask for a little more, they ask for a little more, and they ask for a little more, and then they say, wait, this is really hard to use. Yeah. And, and you know, it's all about being able to um, assimilate and execute, you know, what you can do now. And that, it's, it's like eating the elephant, you know, you've got to do it one bite at a time. Not you, you just cannot get to an end objective. I don't think there ever is an end objective when it comes to company change. But what you need to do is define what it is you need to do today where you want to get to perhaps tomorrow. Right. Uh, and then don't worry about the stuff much further down the line because things may change. Yeah. And I, I find very few companies actually are trying to eat elephants these days. I don't know why it's, it seems to have gone out of, but uh, I understand. Tasty. Yeah, I, I bet, I bet. Um, you know, I'm not judging, but no, it's, uh, it's, it's a good analogy. Um, any final thoughts as uh, we wrap up? Um, no, I think, I think, you know, to me, PLM is allowing about enabling small companies and mid-sized companies to punch above their weight, yeah. uh, to compete with the larger players um, by doing what's necessary uh, to be done today. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, to me, when I think about uh, when I think about it, there's some real practical problems people can solve without having to sort of boil the ocean or eat the elephant, whatever analogy we'd Absolutely. like to use, right? <laughs> um, and, that's, and that's what we're really gonna try and focus on in the show. We're actually gonna hit um, a lot of the specific issues one-on-one -on -one as we go along. Um, so anyway, thank you, this has been a lot of fun. Thanks very much, Jim. All right.